We both yeah. fight, and I, you know, I'm not going to say I'm not happy about that. I, I, it fucking makes me really depressed, actually. But in order to stop these people from bullying other people and trying to bully us at the same time, we just felt it was necessary, you know, at points. It was fucking dangerous, you know, and I didn't want to do it. The other guys didn't want to do it. Our friends didn't want to do it who were with us, but unfortunately it came down to that, you know. So, but I haven't had to do that for many years. Nowadays, if you see him, he's usually you blow kisses at him and they get so pissed off and I'll just leave, you know, so. Um, so, um, yeah, I want to be a pacifist, but, but then when things come up in the world where you see, like you were saying, Turkey attacks Rojava, or aggression in, in other parts of Europe or whatever, you know, America right now interfering in South America, you know, there's you know, all different things going on, you know. You think to yourself, am I going to have to make a choice at some point? You know, I would, I would rather ideologically stand back and go, no, I'm not going to. I'm not going to kill somebody, you know, or, or even like really hurt somebody. I, I'm a human being. I believe in humanity. I'm no fucking way am I going to do that, you know? Because, because in one sense, you're, you're, if you if you do like respond and like or shoot somebody or something, you're doing exactly what authority wants you to do. They want you to fight against each other like all the time. Okay. Any more questions? Anybody? Yeah, we have one more question right now. Sure. Uh, you, you proclaim that you are um, very much uh, pacifist and uh, pro humanity, uh, not for the or against the death penalty and uh, for, for punishment. What in case of, for instance, mass murderers? If there are people who kill settlers? Sure. Well, but, but here's the thing Why, rather than killing them, why don't you try and understand the actual mental processes of why We still don't know that. You know, if there are, in the judicial systems in the world, it's about revenge. Oh, that person's got to die. What's the first <coughs> thing Trump said after these two mass killings in the US, which I'm sure you've probably heard about? The first thing he said when he made a press conference, I want instant capital punishment for this person, kill him. So why are you achieving? You're not understanding why the next person might do. So why don't you try and understand what motivates people to do that? You know? if, if it's revenge is not justice, it's not. It's two entirely different concepts. You know? it's, that's not justice to go and kill somebody. You know? Of course, it's completely heinous for somebody to do that. You know? But you don't. You don't know what's going on inside there. I'll give you a classic example: how circumstances can lead to things. In, in Birmingham. Back in the 80s, Birmingham was very fucking poor, you know, where, where I'm from in the 80s. And then we had the Thatcher government, Margaret Thatcher, I don't know if everybody's aware of but she took all the public services, like closed them down. So in a place called Hansworth, which is near to where I live, there was a, like a halfway house for people who were like quite uh, severe schizophrenic, you know, who couldn't function really outside, you know, in, in, in a, a standard social situation, you know. But, but these places were great, so basically they weren't locked up in some fucking horrible asylum kind of thing. They were in a functioning community, you know, they were, they went out with the people that were working at the thing and they, they experienced life, you know, and everything. So the local conservative government cuts closed that institution. They literally put the people out on the street, okay? So this one guy who was really freaked out, like extreme, like schizophrenic guy, they let him out on the street. They just said, there you go, on the street. So this guy walked into the town centre, like obviously completely freaking out. He like got a pair of scissors from somewhere. He went into a department store and like randomly saw some lady and obviously you're in a store with all sorts of random stabbed this lady like two or three times. <laughs> didn't kill her, thankfully. She was like badly hurt, you know, but didn't kill her. So, read the newspapers the next day. Oh, murderer, you know, hang him, bring back corporal punishment. Well, hang on a minute, look at the circumstances. Government fucking cuts put this guy out on the streets, you know, and through no fault of his own, his mental condition led him to do that. So, who, you, you tell me, whose fault is that? 
So therefore, when people have these, whatever's going on in people's heads, you need to understand that. And then hopefully, in the long run, when you have a, a true understanding of these things, you can stop these like mass shootings from that. You know, understand the mindset, you know. And sorry, man. And I know there's some ones that are politically driven, you know. So then you kind of need to listen to those people, you know. In as much as we've been talking about, you know, all this stuff, people that do voice that opinion, I'm not, I'm not gonna like, you, like attack somebody for doing that. They've got the right to express that, you know. But at least understand what then takes them to the next level. So you can deal with it and stop people from going. <coughs> Hopefully, nothing's perfect, you know what I mean? But it is it's something to understand. Thank you very much. Yeah. I think we are finished for the conversation. No, it's a good one. Thank you. So uh, you said it's like uh, not a question of Paul. But uh, I would. Uh, my position would be it's a question of. In uh, of investment, like like uh, I know that a guy has a life uh, against uh, in front of him. Yeah. And if I can do something, sure. Like, to, to, as you mentioned, like, yeah, yeah, to yeah. understand, sure. To do something, and then it comes back. So so you you do something right, you help. Sure. You invest. Sure. You get something in return. Sure. So so like like in a big picture, this was invest like I have children. Sure. You you grow them up. Sure. They're like they don't know nothing. They sure. Can be really mischievous or whatever. Sure. You you teach them. Sure. But they bring back. Sure. But you can't do it with everyone. Sure. So I, I mean you have to try. Sure. But there's but like I, one point. But I, I still don't I still don't believe that the capital punishment method is is the right thing because. Yeah, there's no equality. It's not. It's not. Yeah, there's no equality. Sure, sure. Not, yeah, yeah. There's, there's no equality because it, it goes back to what I was saying. You you, it, you take too much risk. Sure. Like you can't really know for sure, and sure. it's like like too much risk, and I'm not not gonna go there because. But it like, goes I back. It, it goes back to what I was saying. Mm -hmm. Why is it that the state? What makes the state? Which is is, it, is it, the, I'm talking about the state countries. People so what, what, what makes that? Which is people. It, people make yeah, what, what I'm saying is. The state is a collection of individuals. So then when the exactly. state goes and kills people, whether it's in its own country or or in another country, yeah. if they're interfering in other countries, why shouldn't they go on trial? If, if you're gonna do it with individual citizens who have no power compared to those that pull the string, why should they get away with it? When other people have to die for, for mistakes that they make, you know what I mean? If, 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 you know, you have to have a quality of system, you know, otherwise, this is why a lot of people want to fucking, there's more people than you can imagine that want to break the system down, that, that, that admit that, you know what I mean, because they can see. You know, yeah, but do they have like, like a, a better option? Well, this is what we're trying to, we're trying to work towards. The know. point is, I mean, uh, it's, it's like a revolution, it's like uh, it's nothing perfect. It's like sure. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, you just get better only a little bit at a time. Well, so, 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 so just yeah. dumping the whole system and going like this is all fucked up. It's like not being too able to um, understand what's going on. But and there's an argument. There's an argument to say that if it doesn't, if it doesn't fall down wholesale, like the Roman Empire. The Roman Empire is actually a good example. The Roman Empire collapsed pretty quickly. And everybody thought that's the end of civilization, that's the end of the world, the Roman Empire. That happened so many times. But, 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 after it. but the world rebuilt same itself. Same thing happened with Germans. Same thing happened with Germans. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they were the last to try that. Sure. And all the nations went like, mm, not cool, man. Sure. We're not doing this anymore. Sure. Well, there's various examples. Okay. So there was somebody back there. Can you see that? What about penetration of fascism in an underground scene? I, mean, <coughs> I believe that you've witnessed that. Yeah, have an example that's that. a good point. Yeah, elitism, elitism. Right not, not fascism necessarily, but <coughs> elitism. So people say, I'm more legitimate than, than this band, no, no, that band. Yeah, no, no. No, like they, 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 like they dump. And I yeah. Don't know better. And I don't yeah. Yeah. Sure. Sure. It's sure. Just, it's just, in our country, I come from from Slovakia. Okay. And uh, uh, what I think we're encountering is like uh, the opposition is uh, there's a variety. You can choose from liberals to sure. uh, 
like like right wing sure. liberal sure. and even sure. left wing liberal. Sure, sure. But they're uh, they're not cooperating, and then somebody comes and uh, they just exploit uh, everybody's trust. Sure. Like they know it, it will work. Sure. They they have their twenty percent. Sure. They they build the government and sure. it's like uh, and and they don't feel it. Sure. Even they feel yeah, that's a that, that's a problem with political system, you know, because it's that, that sometimes it's about self promotion rather than. You know what's good for it. This is well, this is why is this is why when somebody asks you're me, you're self promoting. I mean, right yeah. now. Yeah. Well, of course, but I'm I'm trying to do something a little bit. Yeah, but you're right. But you're correct. Sometimes it's unavoidable. You know, why do you try not to self promote? It kind of is in another place. Like the human happy. You have to be aware of that. Yeah, sure, of course. So, sorry, man. Can I? Yeah, yeah. Do you want to finish? What is your observation on that, like? Do you feel like there is a penetration of fascism on the scene? I, I wouldn't say it's fa when you say fascism, you, you talk about ex like literally no, extreme, wrong. But okay. it's more like a hidden form. But you can see some signs of fascism. As in political fascism or, or yeah, like, like yeah, like the same thing. <coughs> yeah. yeah, sure, sure. I mean, of course, napalm is. No, no we're napalm. Not, we have no, we have no. No, no napalm, but there are people like that will completely on different spectrum. Sure. It's, it's a difficult one because I can't stop them from having their opinions. I don't want to stop them from having their opinions. Or, see, I just, I just want to make one point. There was, a, there was a particular thing last year that we concerned Napalm Death. There was a festival in Norway where there was a, like a open, like very openly fascist band playing. And Napalm said to the promoter, look, we're not going to do it if this band's doing it. And he said, okay, then that's fine. And we're like, okay, no problem. And then, of course, on social media, I'm not blaming social media for this, by the way, I'm saying that it did happen. Napalm Death tries to tell the festival what to do and promote. No, no that's no, no. not what happened at all. No, no, no. We gave the promoter a choice. We said, if that man plays, we're not playing. You know, if you want to keep on the bill, that's your choice. We'll just not play. Like so even, even if they did, I mean, it's like the question of values. It's like, sure. like, like why they did it? Sure. But I can't. And what was their power? I mean, they're all like major bands. So yeah, but I don't, I don't want to stop them. I don't want to, I don't want to take away that, their voice as much as I might disagree with it. Yeah. Let them do it, man. But N Napalm's not going to put itself in that situation. Yeah, and, 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 and they can get to exert that pressure. Yeah, and yeah. I mean, that's important because yeah. they, they are like the, uh, like, they have more power. So, hey, so we've done it on big, big, trust me. I mean, if you, if you can, we've do done it, it on, if you get the right, you, you yeah. just stand by your land. I mean, we've done it on big, big, big festivals, actually, which I won't name festivals, but there's been certain bands playing, we're just like, we're not going to do it, you know, that band's doing it. And the festival almost didn't understand it. They were kind of scratching their heads. We're like, isn't it obvious? You know? Um, all right then. See you. <laughs> you know? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Ch Chirbe, you, you have band, one band, vocalist of Spastika, yeah, yeah, yeah. and you, so you can fly here. No, yes? no, no, I don't that. This is just the and, the, and the thing is, Chirp is the promoter. That's entirely Chirpy's choice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's what I exactly, said to Exactly, exactly. That, there, should, 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 there shouldn't be a law for that. No, there shouldn't be a law for that. Because we have a law for that in our country. And uh, we have, right nowadays, 15% of fascists that are in parliament. Yeah. Because you get no discussion. Sure, sure. You can't really expose them. And this, like, they're and always it, marked you. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and this is what I was talking about with you. Yeah. I said, whilst I might completely disagree with those viewpoints, these, it doesn't mean I'm not going to talk to those people. If they want to come up, with, I have no problem with having to come. But back in the day, the first thing they wanted to do is spit in your face. This is a thing that sometimes, it, well, you're just as bad as a fascist. Hang on, I didn't bring that problem to the door. I wasn't the one who went, called, beckoned somebody over at a gig across like a little barrier like that and spat in their face. It's happened to me several times. I didn't do that. It wasn't me. It was fucking them. You know what I mean? So. <laughs> yeah, but what are you going to do about it? Yeah. Well, back then, it was just... But it wouldn't work. I mean, whenever I would, I would come to, to anybody and tell them, you're an asshole for what you think, they won't. They won't come to their senses. And that's yeah. what I really like to, like, yeah. everyone to realize that if you, if you fuck somebody off, if you yeah. beat them off, they're not come to yeah. their senses. You just make enemies. Yeah, you're not an asshole for what you think. You're an asshole for 
what you what do. Yeah, yeah, right. The point yeah. is, you don't want to fight. No, no. It's like, it's like you want to work it out somehow. Yeah, sure, sure. <coughs> is, well, any, is anybody else? I'm sorry, I'm fucking every, everybody, everybody, everybody at the panel. One or two minutes yeah, sure. left, so just yeah. Very, very, very short. Yeah. Without this stupid communist, yeah. fascist, and the stupid people, would, would the extreme music exist? You know, scam, anarchy in the UK. Yeah. This is no, nothing to shout about without the stupid people. People. Yeah. What's up? No, but see, <laughs> you understand me? But see, but see, the, the thing is, it doesn't have to necessarily be <coughs> political yeah. for Napalm Death to write a song about it. Yeah. Again, it's, it's, you're stripping it down to the human perspective, you know, of which there are, like I say, there's a palette with a, a million colours on it, you know, of life that you can paint, you know. So making a song, basically. So there's, there are always things. It doesn't have to be political, you know what I mean? You so know, the extreme yeah, music would be either if you the case come or so it's certainly in the context of, yeah, of course. I think there will be always moving stories and whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, a lot of the stories, even though they're not the end, the stories in the, in the fable sense, you know, the stories. Are if anybody else wants to ask another thing, I, I, I would have a question. So, what you would, um, what you would say, what has changed, or what is better, or what is worse, compared when you first visited Czechoslovakia with obituary and uh, and this member in the 90s? Yeah. How the scene and how actually the people or the music changed since then? <laughs> well, I mean, for, for, uh, from Napalm Death, uh, of course, in, Napalm Death comes to check every two years and does a tour of every I mean, we do little villages. Mm -hmm. I, I can only really answer that, obviously, for Napalm, because we do places that I'm sure a lot of bands would go, eh, not really, village, you know, but Napalm's go, we'll go anywhere and play, you know what I mean? And, and I, I'm not just saying this, I notice in Czech that, you know, working with Cherby and Tommy and all the rest of it, uh, there's always a thing to make the bands like super fucking welcome, you know what I mean? Super, super welcome. You know, to where you get excited, you know, when you want to come back to Czech, you know. I think when I first came to Czech, I mean, this, this sounds like a fucking cliche, but it was like this, you know. Kids were kind of a bit like, holy fuck, is this gig like really happening, you know? When, like when we rolled up to that, whatever it was, the sport. Yeah, yeah. The yeah, yeah. 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 People, the kids are like, they were kind of like open the back, yeah. you know, when we, when we walked in, we were just like, hello, how are you doing, you know, and, like, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> and for us, of course, we're just like normal, you know, yeah. you know, we're just like, all right, how's it going, you know, <laughs> like, what the fuck, you know what I mean, and we were just we like, had no idea. yeah, yeah, it was, it was, it was strange, <coughs> but again, you know, purely from a personal perspective, I, 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 we went, I went with him, the last week of the Soviet Union, I was in Russia, you know, the last week when he was all starting to fall apart, you know, when Napalm was the first band to independently play in Russia, you know, I'm not talking about the corporate gigs that went like independently, you know, it was us and Samael, it's the first independent concert in, um, in Russia, you know, and the, the, I mean, there's a perfect example, the kids were just like, what the fuck is going on, you know, and the whole Soviet Union was literally, you could almost feel it like, like kind of falling apart like that around, you know, it was really fucking weird. Interesting story, actually. Sorry, I won't keep it to <laughs> Some guy, like things were starting to relax, you know, obviously people were starting to speak and, and the rest of it. Some guy came into the dressing room, you know, in, in, the, in Moscow in 1991 with a demo cassette for shame, you know. And he got this demo cassette. There was a fucking swastika on the front of it. And Shane, Shane being Shane, just went, what the fuck's this? Uh, and threw it back at him. And the security saw what was going on. Big, like, Russian, like, fucking security guy. And, like, ran after this guy. And this guy was like, and Shane was like, no, 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 you know, don't, don't hurt him, you know. And this guy ran. This guy fucking jumped over like a stairwell and missed the other side. Fell down the stairwell and fucking died. Broke his neck. 
in, inside this thing. That's um, honestly, that's a true story. It's symbolic. Yeah, it's symbolic. <laughs> symbolic a little bit. Yeah, it was fucking crazy. Man. Honestly, it's fucking yeah. Okay, we, we sure have to go. Yeah, so <laughs> thanks, guys. Cheers. So, <laughs>